Ladies and gentlemen, we are now on our second video of launch day. This one is going to be all about the day one patch notes. And after going through them, essentially what they have done here is updated a bunch of bug fixes, made some changes to some gameplay inside the game from the beta and updated almost all of the weapons or at least a good portion of the weapons from the beta as well. Some of the buffs and nerfs I didn't see coming. So I'm curious what you guys think of it after we go through the patch notes. So a lot to talk about here. Without further ado, let's dive into the update. So these are the day one patch notes. As far as the beginning here, it just essentially goes over the global rollout. Um, if you've played already, you've probably been to New Zealand today, just like myself. Um, if not, it'll go live on PC. I believe it's at midnight uh, Eastern Standard Time, um, but it says specifically here on all platforms later today by 10 p.m. Pacific Time, which is actually 1 a.m. Eastern Time. So that's a little bit confusing, but it should be midnight Eastern Standard Time is when it goes live for everyone. Um, as far as campaign stability and performance, is there anything worthwhile here? So all of this is campaign, so really none of these actually matter too much, but uh, they fixed a bunch of bugs and gameplay bugs um, with campaign. Multiplayer, visual changes, added a stroke to player nameplates to improve the visibility. So if you don't know what that is, the, a stroke around it essentially means that they added like a black border around the outside of it to make it pop a little bit more. Um, it's still, we've run into a couple situations where it hasn't really been still easy to see if they're in dark corners or things like that, or you're not quite looking at them, right? It's still difficult, but it's an improvement, uh, adjusted font and contrast of the score event text on the HUD to be less obstructive. Okay. That's good. New features added a HUD element to display the player's current streak for each kill. So yes, there is a streak counter within multiplayer that a lot of people were asking for that. That's good. Uh, match event pop-ups now feature their respective players equipped calling card. So now calling cards actually kind of have a purpose. So in game, it'll kind of pop up for you. Skillful player achievements such as Kingslayer collateral will now display medals splash on player HUD. So they pop up on your screen when you do good things. Uh, attack stance toggle state is now indicated by a widget on the lower right area of the HUD. So that's good. So you can look down there where you're not aiming down sights and see whether you're in attack stance or ADS. Match stats are now available during gameplay via a new tab in the scoreboard, allowing players to compare current performance to their career average. Uh, detailed, statistics, oh, wow, reading. detailed statistics are now viewable while choosing an attachment in the gunsmith. So we've seen that previously. They showed that in the blog post. Bug fixes. Players will no longer be unexpectedly pr prompted to choose a loadout after earning multiple rewards. I have no idea that never happened to me. So, so under the map section here, the first thing that they're talking about is spawns. Added spawn anchors to many maps in order to influence the flow of combat in the direction of each map's intended design. Okay, that's good. So better spawns. In team deathmatch, team owned areas are now more favored by spawn selection and resistant to enemy pressure. In other words, you can spawn trap better now in team deathmatch. In Domination, spawn selection is now more resistant to enemy pressure on flags, improving consistency by favoring owned flags. So in other words, you're more likely to spawn on your own flags. That's a good thing. Uh, again, that's spawn trapping. Some people don't like it, but it definitely improves the pace of play, at least in my opinion. Uh, then we have a state added a frontline logic to prevent unintentional frequent spawn flips. So less spawn flips on a state. Favela decreased the priority of spawn points near the shack and construction site. I guess that's good. High rise decreased the priority of spawn points in the Acti base and phonic tunnels. So in other words, the middle of the map. All right. Gameplay adjustments, adjusted footstep volume to further distinguish enemy and friendly players. That was 100% needed. Great update there. Added an option to double tap the aim down sights button to activate tax dance. So yeah, added an option means that they added a thing in the settings, which I will have a video on later today. Uh, refresh default loadout options with a widened range of content. That's pretty straightforward. Just more stuff in the default loadouts. Movement sprint input while sliding will now cancel the slide animation. That's good. Decreased aim down sights time penalty while jumping. I noticed this immediately. Jump shotting is way more of a thing now than it was in the beta. So just pay attention to that. Settings. The next one is added a new option to slide slash dive behavior. So this I will talk about again later today in the video, uh, but essentially you can have it so that your crouch and slide button only does crouch and slide and you can get rid of dolphin dive altogether, or you can have it just do dive. Now, the meaty part of these patch notes, the weapons and attachments tuning. I believe every weapon in here 
is a Modern Warfare 3 weapon. So we have the SVA 545. This one has increased bullet velocity by 19%, increased rate of fire from 632 to 682, increased lower torso damage multiplier from 1 to 1.1, and decreased recoil to veer less to the right. That is really big buffs, and I did use this weapon uh, already in the game, and this is the one that we were tap firing, and it actually killed really, really fast. If you tap fired it, if you held down the trigger, it sucked. All right, the MTZ-556 increases the bullet velocity by 18%, so it's going to be better at long range and increase maximum damage range from 23 to 27 meters. So I liked that gun in the beta, and now it's even better, so that's good. MCW increased bullet velocity by 18%, increased recoil during sustained fire, so that's a nerf, and decreased minimum damage from 24 to 21. So overall, that's a nerf, but it does have better bullet velocity. Striker. This looks like a lot of nerfs. Decrease the maximum damage, decrease the near mid damage, medium damage from 27 to 25, decreased mid damage, and decreased aim down sights time. That last one's actually a buff, but the rest of them are nerfs and very big nerfs at that, especially the maximum damage one. So yeah, the striker isn't going to be what it was in the beta. Holger 26, light machine gun, increased the bullet velocity, so it's a little bit better at range. The Pelumont increased the bullet velocity by 16% and decreased the maximum damage from 47 to 45. So that part is a nerf, but the bullet velocity is a buff. But overall, that'll probably be a nerf for that one. Uh, the Jack Annihilator Bullpup, so that's the conversion kit, increased bullet velocity by 29%. That's a lot. And decreased the rate of fire from 666 to 571. So that's your nerf. That's going to make your time to kill worse. That thing was ridiculous in the beta. So um, the MTZ Interceptor increased bullet velocity by 15%, increased hip fire spread during sustained fire. That one is a nerf. And decreased aim down sights time from 330 to 265. That's actually a big one. Um, so that's the marksman rifle that overall that will be a buff um, the marksman rifle mcw 6.8 increased bullet velocity by 12 percent increased hip fire spread during sustained fire that's a nerf and decreased aimed on sights time by quite a substantial amount so they're trying to make marksman rifles better which i didn't really enjoy too much in the beta the longbow sniper rifle increased bullet velocity so they're increasing the bullet velocity on almost everything swapped full auto crosshair for expected semi-auto crosshair I don't know exactly what that means. Increased flinch when shot by an enemy player to align with other sniper rifles. So that's a nerf, but it'll make more sense with the other sniper rifles. And increased hip fire spread while moving. So it's harder to hit no scopes. KV inhibitor. Increased bullet velocity by 5%. That one, not quite as much as the other weapons. Increased hip spread while moving and increased flinch when shot by enemy players by 18%. So that's actually a nerf for that one as well. Uh, the handguns, the WSP Stinger, this one's swapped semi-auto crosshair for expected full auto crosshair. So decrease the maximum damage from 25 to 24. Decrease the maximum damage from 27 to 25. Did they just do it twice? So now the maximum damage is 24. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Um, decrease the maximum damage range from 12 to 6 meters. That's a big nerf. Decrease the upper torso damage multiplier down to one times. And decrease the hip spread during sustained fire. That is a really big nerf to the handgun, the Stinger. Wow. Renetti, they did the same thing with the crosshairs. And then slightly increased the recoil during sustained fire and decreased minimum damage. So, in other words, the minimum damage, that's long range. So, it's nerfed at long range. So, nothing too big on that one, but a little nerf to the Renetti. And then the Jack Ferocity Carbine Kit, that's the conversion kit. I uh, did the same thing with the crosshairs. And then increased aim down sights time, 200 milliseconds. That's a nerf. And they increase the sprint to fire time as well by 20 milliseconds as well. Core 45 handgun. Decreased maximum damage range from 9 meters to 6 meters. And decreased near medium damage range from 20 to 10 meters. So that's a damage range nerf for the Core 45. So that's a nerf. So like all the handguns here. So the next part is just attachments. So the first thing that we have is high velocity. Decreased bullet velocity multiplier from 1.2 times to 1.15 times, so not a huge thing. Decreased sniper rifle bullet velocity from 1.3 times to 1.17 times. Um, so slight nerf to high velocity ammunition. Low grain rounds, decreased damage range penalty, decreased bullet velocity penalty, and decreased recoil control advantage. So that is a buff buff and a nerf there. So that was low grain rounds. Now we have high grain rounds, decreased recoil control penalty, decreased bullet velocity advantage, decreased damage range advantage. So that is a buff, a nerf, and a nerf for the high grain. Then we have the optics, decreased aim down sights time penalty across multiple optic types. 
dots and holographics to zero milliseconds. So that's an improvement there. Um, 2.5 times from 70 milliseconds to 15 milliseconds. So that's almost negligible. Four times scopes to 20 milliseconds and regular scopes to 50 milliseconds. So really not a huge deal on those. Though it's more viable to use scopes on all of your attachments. Muzzles slightly increased aim down sights penalty for flash hiders, compensators, and muzzle brake types. Um, so they made those a little bit worse around the board. Then for perks, demolition vest, this one battle rage tactical will now only restock up to one use. So really that's a nerf to battle rage. Then we have tactical pads, the boots increased slide velocity, replacing the slide distance advantage. So you slide faster in other words. Tack mask gear added immunity to flash grenades thrown by the player self. So in other words, you can't flash yourself anymore with tack mask. For field upgrades, trophy system, mosquito drone will no longer be targeted and destroyed. So mosquito drone buff there, I guess, against trophy systems. Med box updated description to better reflect the functionality. Deploy a box of medical supplies for you and your teammates to reduce healing delay. Yeah, and it doesn't last very long. I, I don't like the med box. It's not good. Kill streaks. So we're almost at the end here. The Guardian SC decreased volume of Guardian SC owned by teammates. So in other words, you can't have too many of them in game. Increased environmental audio occlusion and addressed an issue that caused players HUD to disappear until respawn. Nothing too big there. No big changes to the Guardian. Counter UAVs, players within interior areas will no longer receive not enough space to call in air upon activation. So just a bug fix there. And then the Juggernaut Recon, decreased magazine capacity from 20 rounds to 8 rounds. That's a pretty big nerf. It just nerfs the weapon overall. But I think you'll still have the same amount of ammunition total. Your just magazine is smaller. And then finally, we have vehicles. The NSTV increased traction to improve handling on slippery surfaces. So that is it. That is the day one update. It isn't as big as we've seen in other games because they don't go in depth to everything that is coming at launch. We did that today. I had a video go up about multiplayer and what changed with that. I also have a video going up later today on my second channel about zombies. So make sure you check out my second channel link down below. Um, but essentially, that's the day one update. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. If you enjoyed it, found it informative, hit that like button. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Peace. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're